Would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? Said Alice. That depends a good deal on where you want to get to, said the cat. The New Zealand government's COVID story was founded on fear. It was said that COVID-19 was immensely infectious and almost 90% of New Zealand could or would become infected. They said COVID-19 was incredibly deadly and anyone could die from it and we could expect up to 80,000 deaths. They told us a vaccine would protect us from infection and death and was needed as soon as possible. They also told us the vaccines were safe and effective. It all sounded so convincing, but not all of us were swayed. River of Lies, the New Zealand scandemic. But to sway the rest, the government deployed its most deadly ally in this information war, the mainstream media. For the past two and a half years since this war began, we have seen the most heinous attack on a New Zealander's right to free speech, free thought, and access to the village square. That sacred place where every citizen has the right to voice their opinion and question a government whose primary purpose is to serve the people. Even big foreign tech companies interfered with our democracy and rights to free speech. On the 19th of March 2020, the Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern uttered a phrase not witnessed since the time of Nazi Germany, declaring the New Zealand government the single source of truth. We will continue to be your single source of truth unless you hear it from us. Um, it is not the truth. We drum in that messaging pretty diligently for a full two-week period of sustained propaganda. Is this the language of a freedom-respecting government? And if not, what should be done to inform the people of the gathering storm against their rights and freedoms? We've also seen the spread of misinformation on COVID-19, particularly through social media. We had to act, so we made it a priority to establish a public interest journalism fund to help our media continue to produce stories that keep New Zealanders informed. Underpinning this action is a recognition that a vibrant and trusted media sector is a vital component of a healthy democracy. From then on, anyone that went onto the field of battle against the government's narrative was immediately at a disadvantage because the government was now using the media to fight their war for them. Weaponized New Zealand media started to produce full-on investigative documentaries about certain dissident voices to slander, demoralize, misrepresent, and destroy those enemies of the state. The government has waged a personal war on anyone challenging them on any issue, with our own Prime Minister, government ministers and media calling such people Keyboard warrior, a lone person unacquainted with personal hygiene practices, dressed in a poorly fitted superhero costume, one that is baggy in all the wrong places. But underneath all of that, Madam Speaker, there is a river of filth. Unstable, echo chamber dwellers who believe their own delusions. You know, what is a human brain like? Uh, we like good stories. Uh, we like to have knowledge that is surprising and other people don't have. We like to see patterns in, in a complex information environment. And we like to go on scavenger hunts where we pick up clues. And when we have opinions, we like to connect to other people who share those opinions. This is the things that, that our human brains love doing. And what is that describing? That's describing exactly how a conspiracy like QAnon works. We're going to deliver a credible investigative documentary about the New Zealand media. Have they been weaponized? Are they being used to indoctrinate New Zealanders to engineer in a highly manipulative way our people's understanding of the principles of a free society? We will look at policies and laws made by the current government to assess if they have employed social manipulation, coercion, and the adoption of international treaties, programs and ideologies that will radically change New Zealand, if implemented. Exploring the relationships of past and current New Zealand members of Parliament and the mainstream media sector have had 
with any of these elements hostile to the Kiwi way of life. Why? The media and government claim that anyone who disagrees with the COVID narrative is an unstable, unclean conspiracy theorist who peddles misinformation. Uncovering the key figures and organisations the New Zealand media sector use as reporters and experts to see if they have connections to any agenda, organisation or ideology that may be hostile to our free society. I invite you to join me and my incredible team of committed, honest people on a journey to expose the river of lies.